ask Dr. Frederike Conrotto to come up and talk about impact of access on TAVI procedural and midterm term follow up, a meta analysis of 13 studies and 10,468 patients. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, we are going to talk about this uh, classic uh, procedure in elderly population, the TAVI procedure. I have no conflict of interest to declare. As we know, the um, high-risk patients with severe autism stenosis may be treated with uh, transcatheter otivine implantation as an alternative to cardiac surgery. And transfemoral otivine implantation um, uh, may be, uh, we, we can perform the TAVI procedure using two main access sites that are transfemoral and transhepical. The transfemoral otivine implantation has the advantage to be a completely percutaneous procedure while the transhepic aortivine implantation represents a, a more invasive procedure needing the direct puncture of the left ventricle. Uh, in clinical practice, uh, transfemoral aortivine implantation is preferred over transhepic aortivine implantation whenever a good vascular access is present. And the transhepical way is uh, usually limited to the patients uh, with small or unapproachable uh, femoral vessels. In most studies, uh, the access choice is based on uh, anatomical and clinical characteristics of the patients, and uh, usually a bias favoring transfemoral uh, out implantation in less sick patients uh, is present. For these reasons, it's very difficult to compare the independent impact of the access choice after TAVI. And uh, the aim of our analysis, uh, of our meta-analysis, was to compare uh, exactly this independent impact uh, of uh, the access choice uh, after transcatheter to implantation. Uh, we included in our analysis uh, only studies uh, uh, that uh, reported the adjustment for the clinical baseline characteristics in order to avoid uh, the strong selection bias that we have in most of the studies. And we collected more than 10,000 patients uh, drawn from uh, 13 studies. Uh, and as you can see, the age uh, of the patient uh, was uh, very old, uh, 82 years old. Half of the patient were male. Uh, almost one third of the patient uh, had diabetes. Uh, renal dysfunction was present in the, uh, almost 20% uh, of the patients. Uh, and uh, more than 60% uh, of the patient uh, had a, a previous history of uh, coronary artery disease. Ejection fraction was uh, quite good, uh, 52%, and the preferred access site uh, was the transfemoral one. As expected uh, in this uh, very frail and heavily population, the GC Euro score was very high, and uh, as expected, uh, higher in transhepical uh, patients than, than in, tr in transfemoral patients. These are the main results of our meta analysis. Uh, as you can see, uh, the transfemoral axis uh, seems uh, to be protective uh, in terms uh, of mortality reduction, both for early and uh, mid-term mortality. In particular, uh, the pool adjusted odds ratio for 30 days mortality was lower for uh, and forward transfemoral axis uh, with an odds ratio of uh, 0.81. And the pool adjusted odds ratio for midterm survival uh, was better for transfemoral access uh, with an odds ratio of uh, uh, 0.85. Moreover, we found that uh, not only the uh, transfemoral axis uh, leads uh, to a longer life, but uh, probably it's safer. In fact, uh, um, we evaluated these two uh, great complications uh, that are procedural bleeding and periprocedural stroke after TAVI. And we know that these two uh, complications uh, severely worsen the outcome of uh, TAVI patients. And we found that uh, transfemoral seems to be uh, related to a lower rate of bleedings and to a lower rate uh, of uh, stroke. And in conclusion, we can say that 30 days survival is higher in transfemoral group uh, than in transhepical group. And the rate of uh, periprocedural bleeding and stroke is significantly lower in transfemoral aortic implantation. This short-term advantage of transfemoral approach remains uh, statistically significant, also at mid-term follow-up. 
although we know that the results of the present meta-analysis should be viewed as hypothesis generating only, they suggest that transhepical access should be reserved as a last option in TAVI patients. And this choice may guarantee less mortality, less stroke, less bleeding in this uh, frail and elderly population. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interesting data. Uh, a quest questions from the floor? And there is a hand. Uh, Kim Williams, uh, American College of Cardiology. Just wondering, looking at the data, how much of this is a marker for the fact that the transfemoral patients have less vascular disease? As you know, there's a six millimeter limit on, on how much hardware you can actually get up there based on the, the CT scans that we, that we do ahead of time. And the patients who flunk that parameter are really uh, have a much greater vascular disease burden, and that's going to translate to cerebrovascular disease, coronary disease, more extensive. Um, is there any way to dissect out in a meta-analysis, uh, you know, a, a way to try to uh, get at that and try to um, you know, see if it really is the transfemoral patient because of the vasculopathy uh, being less burdensome? Yeah, yeah, for sure that, that's, that's the key point of, uh, of this study because uh, as, it, as there's a selection bias so strong based on the vascular um, conditions of the patients, uh, uh, usually the patients that uh, we perform in transhepical way are more diseased. Because vascular, uh, if the vascular vasculitis is not good, uh, probably all the patients is, is, is diseased, all over the patient. And uh, that's the reason why we performed this meta-analysis uh, using only adjusted uh, data. And uh, we, we didn't uh, pick uh, in, in the literature all the experience of the comparison between uh, these two access sites, but just uh, we, we chose the, uh, the, the data uh, adjusted with a multivariate uh, approach. So uh, it's, it's not... Uh, Obviously, um, exact this, this uh, statistical analysis. Well, is not uh, we, we cannot exclude completely a selection bias, uh, but uh, we we think that is the um, most uh, um, valuable uh, opportunity that we have to compare this to this, this access. Walton Shirley with theheart.org. I'm sorry, I may have missed this, but in your uh, patient selection. The incidence of COPD is not listed here, and those patients do more poorly with apical approach, we would think, so that's the bias. Did you exclude those patients, or? Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, well, uh, we didn't exclude the, uh, uh, no patients in, in our analysis. COPD uh, <laughs> was uh, evaluated with a uh, um, meta-regression analysis, uh, but was not related to the outcome. Interesting. And uh, we, we perform, I, I didn't show you, but uh, we perform a meta-regression with uh, more, all the recovery aids uh, that are the, the age, the COPD, and uh, um, ejection fraction, and, 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 and others. And we didn't find any relation between uh, these uh, uh, comorbidities and the outcome of uh, mortality. That's interesting because you would think intuitively if you have severe COPD, you would do worse when you do anything to the chest. Yeah. So yeah, but, but the in, in meta-regression analysis that we performed uh, was not present. Thank you. Uh, Peter Henning, thrombosis and hemostasis. Did you look at the elderly, at your older patient selection at the anticoagulation statues where they equally distributed? Well, actually, um, all the studies that we included in our meta-analysis were published, so we didn't have that data. So we, did, we didn't, didn't know. Uh, Frick? An excellent uh, overview. Uh, we see that transapical um, is uh, not as good as transfemoral, except for strokes. But the, other pro the, the problem with transapical, what surgeons tell me all the time, is when you start to bleed uh, with a transapical um, uh, cardiac bleed, 
in a transapical setting that it is very difficult to uh, to stop that bleeding. Whereas if you start to bleed from a femoral artery, that's yeah. more easy to uh, to manage. Is is it, are you a surgeon, <coughs> by the way? Yeah, I agree with you, oh. and um, yeah. I, I have two more hypotheses for the, but they are not um, evaluated in our study, but uh, probably a transhepical uh, way is associated also to a higher rate of uh, renal injury, as some data uh, um, are getting in, 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 this, in this point. And probably the length of the hospital stay for patients uh, um, that uh, underwent a transhepical uh, procedure is longer than, uh, per, than, than the, the length of the hospital stay of uh, transfemoral patients. And that means that uh, this patient could uh, uh, suffer more of uh, infection, for example, and these are very frail and uh, elderly patients. So these are two other hypotheses that we, we can speculate on. Okay, thank you very much. And thank then you. we'll go on to the next.